Hello guys, welcome to all and web tutor presented by Profotex Sessions team. I am Sanjay. We are learning MySQL trigger tutorial for beginners. This is our part 6. Inside this video session guys, we are going to create multiple triggers with the same trigger event as well as activation time. So far inside this playlist, we had created only a single trigger at a time, which basically activated called before or after on the DML operations called insert, update and delete. Now inside this video, we are going to create more than one trigger which basically have same trigger event as well as activation time. So what will be the syntax to create multiple triggers? Let's say that we are going to create triggers. Now this time we are going to create multiple triggers. So the first trigger we will create same syntax what we have actually we have seen inside previous video. So if you go to the next slide. Now this is the syntax actually we have to follow to make when we want to make our second trigger. The first trigger actually we have to make with the same syntax. Now let's say that suppose we have created our first trigger. Now we are ready to create our second trigger. So while creating second trigger, this is the syntax actually we need to follow. Call delimiter, create trigger, trigger name, activation time, DML operation on table name for each row. This is the same syntax what we have seen so far. Now we have to write the same syntax along with we are going to add some keywords with existing trigger name. Now inside this, we have to add one extra keyword, something either called follows or precedes. This is the syntax, what actually we are talking about the second trigger. Here we have to provide the existing trigger name. It means that we have created our first trigger. And remember, the first trigger should be created with the same syntax what we have discussed so far. Now what basically means? or the keyword means called follows and precedes. Let's understand about these things clearly. So if you go to the next slide. So creating multiple triggers in case we have multiple triggers for the same event in a table. MySQL will, will invoke the triggers in the order actually they have were created. To change the order of triggers, we need to specify called follows or precedes after for each row clause. What basically it means? It means that inside our database, suppose a table has called 10 triggers. By default, MySQL will fire or invoke the triggers what actually in order they are created. But remember, if you want to change the order of activation of the triggers, so for that, we need to use either called follows or precedes. What basically this follows means? The follows option allows the new trigger to activate after the existing trigger. It means that when suppose we will write about the follows keyword here, it means that this trigger will execute first. The first trigger will be executed first. And secondly, this second created trigger will be activated. The second trigger will wait to activate after the existing trigger. But when we supply called precedes keyword means this second trigger will be activated first and this existing trigger name or the existing trigger will fire after the second trigger. Let's understand about these things with the help of an example. So back to PHE my admin. Now inside this database currently we have three tables called products products backups and updated user logs. This product table contains the product information. Right here inside this table, we have three columns called ID, name and the amount. As well as we have some dummy data inside this table. If I back to DB. Now inside the second table called product backup. Inside this table, we are going to save all the products which basically updated. Okay, so inside this table, we have now three columns. Let's say that we are going to update called product ID 3 
and the amount previously let's say amount equal to 200 now this time we want the to update the amount let's say 250 so 250 is the updated amount so before updating the updated amount we want to take the history of our products so that we have to make our products backup table back to database now inside here next we have called updated user logs this table basically means that let's say that we have a mysql currently i am logged in by using username called root so let's say i am going to update any product detail so after update we want to take previously the backup of product so backup of, of product will be saved inside this table but remember actually we are currently logged in by root user so what basically the user has updated our product so also we want to take about the user backup so that in future we will understand or we can find that what basically that user has updated what product so inside this table we are going to make accordingly about product id and the updated user so we are going to create two triggers inside this video the first trigger will basically takes about the product backup and the second trigger which follows the first trigger and it will actually save our user information it means which user has updated our product so if I duplicate this tab go to SQL tab now let's say delimiter delimiter in here now inside this let's say create trigger and let's say after we have called product stable if we go to db and we have product stable so here let's after products and let's say update this is our trigger name let's activation time and the dml operation we have now on product stable let's say for each row this is our first trigger now the syntax we are going to follow the same syntax what we have seen so far let's say begin and finally end here now inside this begin and end i am to firstly take the backup of the updated table updated product so let's insert into products backup this is the table actually we are going to use now inside this table remember we have the column called product id so copy this column name go here and let's say column name second the next column we have something called amount so copy that and pasting it here let's say in case of values we are going to fetch about the old product id so this is old dot id and the amount so old dot amount <laughs> sorry it's by mistake actually we have opened by passing control t a new tab so let's say that this is the old information actually we are taking from the products table and we are making backup inside this products backup table now the first trigger we have made completely so if i press go button successfully we have created our first trigger it will take the backup of our product let's say that if go to db click on products backup click on browse there is no data inside this table right now let's say that we are going to update some row inside this products backup go here let's say that product 2 and i am going to update let's say amount something called 600 now this is the updated amount so if i press go button successfully we have saved that and it has reflected right here inside this products table if i go to products backup reload this page now inside this backup table remember we have actually updated about the product id2 and the old amount we have something called 200 now this time we had taken about the products backup table now we are going to take or make another trigger 
which follows about our first trigger and basically it will take about the user logs means which user has updated this product. So open up SQL into a new tab and let's say that delimiter delimiter ints here create trigger trigger name so let's say after we have called product stable and let's say update underscore 2 this is the actually second trigger we are going to make with the same trigger activation time as well as DML statement after that we have to provide activation time so let's after and the update it will be our update DML operation let's on it's a product table for each row now after that either from follows keyword or the precedes keyword we have to use so I want that this actually the created first trigger will be activated first and the second trigger what we are creating from the syntax will activate it then so for that we have to use called the follows keyword it's because we want that this option the new trigger to activate after the existing trigger so we want that the previously created trigger will be activated first so back to browser and let's say follows and after that we have to provide our existing trigger name so we have created called after let's say products and this is update here this is our existing trigger name go here let's say begin and here I have to provide call end and remember one more thing that if I copy all these codes and cut these codes from the SQL tab it's because because we are making all the triggers at the database label no at any specific table right now we are inside this products backup table and if you go inside trigger section now inside this table there is no trigger accessed it's because we have created all the triggers at database label and inside these triggers as we can see that this is our trigger so right now we have to go inside the SQL tab and paste all the codes now inside this BNN and AND block we are going to take our user log so let's insert into let's say updated user logs and inside this we have to pass the column name back to DB click on the table go at the structure and inside this structure we have called product ID so copy this column name pasting it here and then next we have called updated user which basically contain the user information now inside this values let's say that all dot ID it will give that what product we have updated now next this is updated user so by you by using mysql user function it will give about the currently logged in mysql user so if we save all these changes successfully we have created our second trigger and here we have some mistake now inside this trigger basically we are taking about the user log so if I press go button now successfully we have created that again go at triggers label now we have two triggers this is our first trigger and by using follows keyword we have created our second trigger now let's say that we are going to update some products inside this table but firstly I am going to open about the products table this is about updated user logs right now there is no content inside this table and also let's open about the products backup table and inside this table only one row we have let's say that I am to update product 3 and let's say that this will be called 550 press go and we have some error and error is something called filled ID does not have a default value and I think that if we go inside update user logs 
and this updated user logs basically contains no auto increment ID. So firstly we need to make it as. If we back to the trigger definition and as we can see that inside this, here we have not specified the ID because in the table structure ID is not auto increment. So we have to make it as auto increment ID. So let's say that if I copy this table name again back to DB and I need to drop this table. Let's say that here updated user logs column 3 we want and let's ID something called product ID and let's say that updated the column name we have something called updated user. So copy and pasting it here. It should be varchar 50 characters in length product ID it should be int and the first column is auto increment and the primary key. Click on save all we have created now. So if I again back to our updating mode and click on go successfully as we can see that we have updated here is the 550 is the updated amount back to our products backup table reload this page now inside this table we have got product ID 3 what we have updated before updating we have 150 is the old amount now back to users log table click on browse now as we can see that inside this table we have one row it means that the product 3 has been updated called root at the rate localhost this is currently logged in mysql user again if we update let's say called 4 and if we reduce the amount something 110 press go we have updated refresh this page we have take the taking the products backup right here inside this table and inside this updated user logs also we have taken about the user backup which user has updated which product so this is the video guys which basically demonstrate about using follows and precedes keyword by writing these two, these keywords actually we can change the order of execution of our triggers by default mysql will invoke all the triggers in order what actually they are created so inside this video session guys if you went out then please drop your comment i will give my reply as soon as possible so for this video session guys thank you for watching and have a great day